Hi and welcome to this, our little lesson on piecewise hybrid functions. Now what do you mean by piecewise and hybrid functions? Whoa! Well, if you've got a hybrid car, that means your car operates on a bit of electricity and a bit of petrol, gas, fuel, whatever you're saying. So hybrid has something to do with mixing stuff together. For those of you who are unfortunate enough to be taught by me, you will find the work you need to do just here. Thank you so much. But... As is normal, bit of a recap. Now, obviously, you guys have been away on holidays for a bit. And so we've already talked extensively about functions. We've covered what a function is. Now, remember, there is a difference between a relation and a function. And I think sometimes we as math teachers make mistakes by using the word function all the time when, in fact, a function is a specific thing. So to go back, if you remember, a function has to pass the vertical line test. And by that it means if you can draw a vertical line through your graph and it only crosses that graph once, then it is a function. Now, everything I think other than that is a relation. So y equals mx plus c, y equals x squared, uh, all relations, even x squared plus y squared equals 4 is a relation. But in this situation here, that would not be a function. Why? Well, basically, that is a circle with radius 2. And if we draw a vertical line through that, what do we find? Well, it goes through twice. So it wouldn't be a function, but it's certainly a relation. We've talked about function notation. So that's where you've got f uh, with a colon, and then you've got your domain of, say, uh, which is mapped onto real of some function equals x squared. So again, knowing what each of these sections means is critically important. This here is your domain. This is your codomain. This is your actual function. And please make sure that that f and that f match. So you, you, know, you know, your domain and range. And funnily enough, we talk about domains and ranges. Domains are all possible x values. Ranges are all possible y values for a particular function. Let's scroll across. So if we look at y equals x squared, for example, what is our domain? Now, I'm going to draw a quick sketch of y equals x squared. And what I'm saying is, bearing in mind this axis goes all the way to infinity and negative infinity, I want to ask you the question, are there any numbers between minus infinity and infinity which we can't square? Right, so think of the number, I know, minus 6, or 7, or 1,346,902, or 920. Are any of those numbers not possible to be squared? Well, actually, there is no number between minus infinity and infinity that can't be squared. No reason in this world why it can't be squared. And so, in this situation, we would be saying our domain is equal to all real numbers. Now, I would prefer you to start using methods notation, and domain is given by x in this situation, is a set of, or is contained within a set of, and this situation we would do real, or we could say x is a set of numbers from, oh no, not square brackets, chillax, minus infinity to infinity. And remember, it has to be curved brackets for infinity because infinity isn't a number. So we've looked at the idea of domain and range. Well, range, whereas uh, domain is the possible x values, range is our possible y values. Now, again, if we use the idea of y equals x squared, what are the possible y values? Well, well firstly, there's absolutely no part of my graph currently below the x-axis. So it would suggest that the lowest value of y that is achieved is at the value of 0. And it would appear that all values from then on, because my graph seems to stretch on to infinity and beyond. So our range in this situation would be from 0 and including 0 to infinity. We can write that in a different way. We could write f of x is a sub, or it falls within a subset of 0 to infinity. Or we could use real number notation by saying r plus or 0, right? because we have to include the value of 0. So this here is all positive real values, but 0 is neither positive or negative, so we have to say or 0. This is all work we've done previously. We've looked at real numbers and integers. We know that. We've looked at the vertical line test 
to test for one-to-one -one functions, right? Uh, sorry, to test for a function. And we've looked at why and how we restrict a function. And again, to talk about why we would restrict a function. If we have this function here, no, don't press stop, not just yet, guys. This is a preview video and you've reached almost the end of it, but it does continue over on mathsguru.com. Mathsguru.com, yep, that's my custom website. Bits of it you can see around me at the moment. That has been designed to allow the videos to be easier searched than they are on YouTube. So you can search by chapter, by textbook. Each video has downloadable notes for you, so you can put them in your summary book or your exercise book. There are exam questions and there is more and more content and more stuff coming as time allows. So head on over there, it's absolutely free to sign up and I'm doing everything I can to make sure that you guys enjoy maths and actually take out the mastery of maths. It is not as hard as you think, it is all smoke and mirrors. Okay, thanks very much, take care guys, I look forward to seeing you in another video. Stay safe.